Hello and welcome back to Instant Insights. At Global Data Thematic Intelligence, we track over 100 tech, industry, ESG, and macro themes impacting all major sectors. I'm Carolina Pint, and today I'd like to welcome back Steve Blitz, Chief U.S. Economist at T.S. Lombard. Steve, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I wanted to have you back on the podcast to discuss the the health of the U.S. economy at the moment. I feel like we haven't spoken about that in a while. And coincidentally, the Federal Open Market Committee meeting was yesterday uh, for our listeners. Uh, That is a meeting held eight times a year where the, the Fed essentially reviews the economic and financial conditions of the U.S. economy. It assesses the risks to its long-term goals and whether they need to change their monetary policy. Uh, Currently, their long-term goals are to get inflation down to 2% and then to also maximize uh, employment. But at yesterday's meeting, the Fed decided to hold interest rates steady and not cut interest rates, although they alluded that they may do in September. Uh, Steve, what does this tell us about the state of the U.S. economy right now? Well, I think um, the state of the economy right now is, I think you can say, tenuous, right? So it's never about the static numbers at the moment, but because that's telling you exactly what the Fed said, right? Which is that the economy seems to be normalizing. One of the challenges in running policy at this point in time is that you've gone from a white hot economy a couple of years ago. At that moment in time, you just got a very low unemployment rate and you didn't have many people willing to go to work. They're afraid of COVID, they couldn't work, whatever. And so, uh, in the ensuing period, you got a higher unemployment rate and, you know, you've gone from, say, three and a half to a little over four. And a lot of people will say that on a statistical basis, that's telling you, oh, we're heading to recession. But I think it's reasonable to say, well, no, this is just that you've gone from something that was very unusual and the and the employment market is now doing something that's a little bit more normal, right, at this point mm-hmm. in the cycle. And that's the bet the Fed's making, right? Which is very similar to the bet, though at the other end of the spectrum, back in 2022, remember they were saying that inflation was transitory, right? Yeah. So if you followed a rule, you would have made the funds rate eight, 9%, right? Mm-hmm. But you would have crashed the economy. But they understood that a lot of what was in the inflation number would work itself out as supply chains normalized and all the stuff that we all know too well. So they had this period where they were raising the funds rate in anticipation of the inflation rate coming down, right? Yeah. And so they wanted a cross at a point, right? In other words, with the funds rate, federal funds rate, their policy rate above the un- uh, inflation rate at a point in time where the economy could still expand. They managed to do that, and kudos to them. Now, the reason why I'm talking about employment as opposed to inflation is that employment is, uh, inflation, sorry, is down around 3%. At 3%, this funds rate at 5.5% is too high. It's not going to create a recession today, but it will create one down the line because the impact of expensive money works through the economy with a with a lag. In other words, it takes time, right? It's that if you just look at the data, right? And if you're not an economist or somebody's used to analyzing the data, it just looks like data. Well, the data today says this, therefore that must be true. But some data lead, some data lag. Some data are coincident with the economy and and things like that. So what the Fed has to be concerned about at this point is that the the policy rates may not be high enough that at this very moment you see recessionary numbers, but it Mm -hmm. creates it down the road, right? And so, so, and you're especially yeah. talking about uh, the employment. Essentially, if there's high right. unemployment, it's not it's not going to be seen today, but tomorrow, in a year's time, two years time, it could create a problem. Correct. 
Right. Well, not that far away, but yeah. <laughs> yes, but really talking about by probably something like by year end or yeah. maybe even in the next couple of months. You know, the problem with employment data from a policy standpoint or even from an analyst standpoint is that it tends to weaken very slowly at first and then all of a sudden it just collapses very quickly. And if the Fed is waiting, right, it's by definition going to be too late. Because uh -huh. their promise, and this is why they should have, I think, instead of saying they were going to cut, actually cutting in July, when they set the funds rate at five and a half, inflation was running in the low fours, right? And unemployment was under 4%, right? And the economy was growing. Now the economy is still growing, right? Uh, at least in the second quarter, and it grew strongly, but you know it turned about about two and a half percent. But inflation, instead of in the fours, is now at three, mm -hmm. and the unemployment rate, instead of three and a half, is at a little over four. They have no business keeping the funds rate at five and a half percent, right? Because now mm -hmm. They've done exactly what they said they were not going to do, but historically what they always do, which is wait too long because they're afraid they have good fortune right now, mm -hmm. right? But they're afraid of making the wrong move. So they're paralyzed, right? And they think, well, we can wait just three more months. Well, I'm sorry, two more months, the middle of September. So you th um, you think they're yeah. essentially they're making a mistake by not uh, cutting interest rates today, and that's because they are. Is it because they're focused too much on inflation? Yeah, although they tell us that they've now shifted, and they told us a while ago that they've now shifted to uh, the labor markets as their as their main focus. Um, mm -hmm. But they're not certain whether what they're seeing in the labor market is a normalization of that market, or that it's an actual you know cyclical weakening towards recession. And mm -hmm. and and in fairness to them, it is difficult to tell. But the problem is you're seeing other things around you, right, that are telling you uh, that the economy is starting to lose some edge. Now, I'm not going to tell you we're in recession because we're not, but that they are at, they are risking, right, exactly what they said they weren't going to risk, which is a recession. So is, in your opinion, is the rising unemployment rate to 4% a normalization of the market in a post-COVID environment, or is it a sign of a recession and the Fed is making a mistake by not cutting interest rates? I think to where we've gotten to so far, I've characterized as normalization, okay? Mm -hmm. But I do see from this point data, and we'll get a better sense of that tomorrow, when the unemployment, the employment data come out. But I am beginning to see other things that tell me that this employment situation is going to deteriorate more going forward. And the mm -hmm. reason is, and it really rests with small business, and is that, um, as opposed to the big tech firms, is that the cost of financing is high, right? And so when the cost of financing is high, that means you're going to run off your inventory and you're not going to hire people. I mean, you always stop hiring before you start laying off, right? But eventually you're going to start laying off people, reducing your workforce, right? I mean, we just got an announcement from Intel and all that. I mean, you know, those things tend to make news because we have a negative bias, but, you know, you don't, read that, oh, such and such a firm just said it was going to hire X number of people. So no. you know, the news, <laughs> the news kind of like skews us a little bit that way. But the major thing is that the real yield curve inverted last November. Mm -hmm. And historically, whenever the real yield curve inverts, you get a recession on average, right? Now, and averages are, you know, there's that old saying about 
statistician is somebody who has his head in the oven and his feet in the ice box and says the average temperature is 72 degrees. <laughs> so, you know, but so take the average with a, with a large grain of salt, right? But the average is around 12 months, which means by the end of this year, we will be in recession. Mm -hmm. If the Fed now, the Fed has an opportunity here, right? Um, and I think it probably knows this, that it can turn this economy around very quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason it can turn around the economy very quickly is that one, the funds rate is very high relative yeah. to where it should be. So we can cut like crazy, mm -hmm. right? And still have uh, a funds rate that is uh, constraining to inflation. That's yeah. number one. Number two, you normally at this point in the cycle, you have businesses and households are usually overextended, meaning they spent a lot, they spent ahead of their income, they've got debt. And so once the economy starts to slow, they have to quickly cut back on spending and you get bankruptcies go up and all sorts of bad things like that. This time around, and I'm not going to say there are no people or firms that are overextended, but this time around, uh, you're hitting this point in the cycle where there's this huge overhang of liquidity. There's yeah. a lot of cash in the aggregate, right? Back to those average stories. <laughs> but in the, in the aggregate, you've got a lot of liquidity sitting on, you have a big overhang of liquidity in the economy. It's sitting on household balance sheets. It's sitting on corporate balance sheets. So if the Fed cuts rates and actually cuts them, they can move money very quickly. And that mm -hmm. money will go into the equity market. That money will go into buying a house. That money will go a lot of different places. So, so they have that power. And I think that has them a little bit too overconfident that they can turn this thing around. And look, the market is priced in the easing. But there is a difference between the market pricing cuts and actually cutting. Yeah. Right. It, there is a difference. There's a functional difference because if you're running your business and you're running your 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 you're financing your inventory on say on commercial paper, that mm -hmm. commercial paper is tied to the, the level of short term mm -hmm. rates. And it's not going down until the level of short term rates goes down, which occurs when the Fed cuts. Mm -hmm. So you still have financing pressures to a lot of the economy. And it's problematic. So it does matter when they actually cut. So they're banking on that when they cut, they can cut uh, big. Well, they if, if it's, uh, I mean, they're thinking they're going to cut 25, mm -hmm. uh, which they might still do if the numbers, you know, depends on what the data look like. Mm -hmm. And look, if this economy starts to fall apart faster, they can have a <laughs> conference call and then decide to just cut, right? Yeah. If the mm -hmm. data tell them. Now, if the data swing the other way, you know, they, they could not cut. But I would say that they're more likely to cut. And I think what's going to move them to cut, you know, some is is going to be the employment numbers, not the inflation number. I think that makes sense. And and we'll see if if you're right, if they've waited too late. But um yeah, uh, I mean, tomorrow <laughs> could make me turn me into a liar. You know, if we were suddenly have three hundred thousand jobs. This only comes out on Monday, so let's hope uh, you're right. Well, we, we, we may have to edit this. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Your uh, insights are always very uh, useful and uh, makes me understand about the U.S. economy much more than I uh, I did thirty minutes ago. But uh, thank you for those instant insights. Uh, thank you for listening. And from us at Thematic Intelligence, uh, see you next time.